Welcome back to Don's Life, welcome to the channel, thanks for joining today. Today the fine folks at Handshow have sent over this power front kit that we're going to install on this Model 3 Tesla. Let's go. Okay, before we go too far with the install, make sure to go to Handshow's website, have a look at the vast selection of accessories and DIY mods they have for your Tesla. No kidding, just for the Model 3, they must have almost 30 different unique things that you can do to customize your Tesla just for yourself. And while you're on the website, use the promo code Dawn's Life and save yourself 15%. It's always a good idea, at least it's my best practice, to lay out all the accessories, everything that gets shipped with the product, and just kind of go over everything and get a good understanding of its functionality and what it does. It may help you with your troubleshooting. So first we have the struts. These are powered, which tells me that when the power is applied, they are going to push on the uh, braces, so that way this will push the frunk open. But then we have a motor here with a cable that gets pulled back into this sleeve, so it retracts the cable. And then these are the brackets for the struts that we need to replace the original brackets with. This is the LED light strip that's going to illuminate the entire frunk area for us. This is a big upgrade compared to the courtesy lamp that exists already. This is all of our wiring with a 30 amp fuse. This kit is completely plug and play specific to this Tesla. And this is the control box that's gonna make everything happen. This is the version 5.0 and it has soft closing latch function. It's a waterproof version and an anti-pinch function, which is a safety mechanism so the front lid, if it finds too much resistance, it won't fully close and pinch your fingers. They also come with a two-year warranty, and you can read through what the warranty covers and doesn't cover. Some heat shrink tubing for one plug that we're not going to use, which we'll get into in the install. We got some adhesive backing just for mounting the motor and the control box. And then we have some cable ties for our wire management. And then they give us a replacement spring here for one of the springs that's in there, and we'll get to that as part of the install. It does ship with instructions. I do recommend reading them, checking out videos such as this one. I am going to bring the instruction manual to life, and we're going to start the process step by step by step by step, and take you along for the ride. Let's go. First, we want to make sure that the screen is turned off before the install, because it's just a good idea when you're working with Teslas that anytime you're unplugging devices or plugging devices in, which we're going to do a little bit of that with the wiring in the front area. You don't want any error messages to prompt. So we're just gonna go into the safety menu and we're going to turn it off. All right, step one, let's start removing all the trim. And all of these are just pop release to begin with. Set this aside. Set this aside. Undo the switch. Just a little flathead screwdriver, just very gently. Can help you release that. Now we gotta undo the bolts. There's seven of them. We could do this by hand or we could use power tools. Who doesn't like using power tools? But we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So undo all of those. All of these are exactly the same, so just set them aside for later. Now we can just start to release the clips around the sides, and our front should lift right out. And if you get mad along the way, you can just bite on this, but we're not going to get mad in this video. All right, step two, we need to replace the struts and their brackets. The driver's side is known as the left side. The passenger side will be the right side. These are labeled. You can see a letter R stamped on each of these. So we know they go to this side. Really easy to figure out. You just want to make sure that the strut mounts face inward. In this case, this would go this way and you can see the two 13 millimeter bolts we need to undo. And then this would go this way to replace that one. And these are both 13 millimeter as well. But first we need to get this strut off and I'll show you how to do that. Super simple to take these off. If you've never done it before, just grab a flathead screwdriver and you just pry this back a little bit, a little bit outward pressure. You could take it all the way off if you want, but it's not necessary to remove that clip. 
and then it'll come undone. And then same for the bottom. Done. Let's clip in our first strap. These do turn, so if you feel that they aren't lined up, that's why. Just give it a little twist to line it up in the right spot. So the bottom's in, turn it a little bit, and the top's in. And then we'll tuck this wire just behind here. Now the other side. All right, step three, we're going to install the latch mechanism. It's really not as hard as it looks. It can be a little bit overwhelming. If you've seen some videos out there, if you look at the pictures in the instructions, it, it's kind of hard to make sense of what's going where. Don't worry, we'll walk you through it. So let's get started. I'm just gonna use hand tools on this part so you can follow a little closer and hear what I'm saying. This can vary depending on the model that you have, but the idea and how it works is still similar. So we're just gonna undo these two screws. There's some versions of the Tesla where you do not have to take this apart like we are, but in this case, we have to unmount it. We'll just set these aside. Now we just wanna unplug this clip. Make sure you undo the safety first, and then you can, you just have to squeeze that little piece and it comes out. All right, next we're gonna take out the existing spring. Eventually we'll replace it with this one, but this one here is a different tension than this one does. So if we leave the original, which we could, it's just going to be louder when it operates. This one will make it quieter, but for now, let's remove this one. All right, watch closely. We're going to install this new bracket in behind the existing one. So first things first, you wanna get this one up here. We want to just hook that in. We'll cut this cable tie off later. It's just to make sure that this, uh, cable stays placed. You can see how that's gonna pull there. And then this bracket actually lays underneath. And it's okay if this pops off, you can pop it back on. And then you wanna line up these holes. And now we can go and put this spring back in. Okay, so the spring needs to go behind this thing, wrap around here, and then go back into this channel. Just like that. Now, if things seem loose, it's just because you may have accidentally put it in a latch position. So watch your fingers, but we do want a little more tension on this cable. We want this to come back up. So you can just push over here and it'll return everything to normal and they'll have more tension on this cable. Okay, now we're just gonna cut this cable tie free. So it's out of the way. Okay, now we can put it back where it belongs. So it has to go this way. Don't accidentally try and put it this way. You can probably get it to fit, but it's not the way it goes. It goes with the mechanisms all facing inward. And then we're going to just start the screws here or the bolts. And you don't want to push it down too far. You want everything to be kind of up and towards you. That way the latch will uh, catch properly. All right, step four is hooking up all the wiring. It's pretty simple. They give you a wonderful outline of what every plug does. Also, every single harness is color coded. You can't get it wrong. They match all the original OEM color codes as well. So everything is just plug and play, clip it in. We'll buckle down all the wires later and make sure that they're all secure and, and not in the way. But for now, we just want to hook everything up and make sure it works.
All right, first we're gonna start with all of our struts, white plugs, white plugs, and white plugs. Male and female connectors, very easy to figure out. They'll only fit one way. So that side's connected. That's connected. Part of the wiring is hooking up the motor. So there's only one plug that'll connect correctly. So this connects here. And then this motor, you take off this adhesive. I'm gonna clean this a little bit with alcohol and it's going to tuck up right in here. Next, we're gonna connect our ground wire. We're gonna back this bolt off a little bit and just tuck it into there. Next, we gotta unplug the original motor adapter right here. And then we're gonna plug this harness. See, they look the same. So that'll go there and then these will connect together. That's done. Next, we'll hook up our fused power wire just inside here. So we'll back the positive off and we'll just slide it in here. Next, we'll hook up our limit plug to here. You can see how this works. There is a little bar that gets pushed down and a micro switch here. So it knows the limit of the latch. So this plug goes right here. We're running out of plugs to connect. So next we want to connect this guy here to the original latch. And then this one will go to there, locked in. And then this is the original switch button. This one's not gonna get used. We're gonna cover this with electrical tape. And then this one will go in that switch's place. We wanna make sure all of our connections are made before we hook up the control box. So I do need to hook this up in advance, but it's okay because we can fish it through the frunk tub when we go to put it back together. So let's just plug this in here. Now everything's connected. We just have to hook up the control box. Before I connect the control box, I'm just gonna double check the mechanism here, make sure everything looks right. So very carefully, I can push down the latch. Okay, that would be the lock position. I wanna make sure that this bar still moves the way that it should. It's, and then I should be able to just pull back on this, simulating pulling the cable and it should unlatch. So looks like we're good. Now let's connect our control box. There we got our illumination back. Now we should be able to test it. Now remember I said it has a safety mechanism that if it sees too much pressure, it won't fully close. So let's uh, put my hands at risk. Bonus. Before we test everything, I wanna make sure I put a safety in place that if I need to open the frunk for whatever reason, if it's not working, I can just pull on this and that should release it. Okay, we open the garage door, let some air in here. It was getting kind of stuffy. Moment of truth, we're ready to go. Now I did do a lot of pre-reading before this install. If for whatever reason, it's not latching properly or releasing, you may have to adjust where this sits. You wanna make sure that when the striker comes down that it is able to make its way clearly through the slide here. There's a bit of a guide. This senses when the latch is in place and then all the mechanisms kick in. So I ran this safety out here just so we can grab it when we need to, if we need to, but let's get started. All right, we're just gonna push the button here. It's illuminated and hope for the best. Yes, perfect. Now we're gonna try and open it. Well, I'm still working with it. I'm gonna leave the safety on for a while, but when we're all done, I'll remove it. But for now, I will just leave it available if we need it. Step five, 
All right, we're just gonna do some cable management, then we'll put everything back in place, including the frunk tub, and then we'll run the LED lighting. Okay, we're gonna mount the control box up here. There's a front cross member. You can see there's some aluminum or a brace showing there. We're just gonna put some adhesive on the back and then stick it up there out of the way. Step six. Okay, everything looks perfect. Let's do another test. Now we'll put our seven bolts back in place. We'll put our shroud back on for the HVAC. Just clips in. Done. The last piece, the shroud. Okay, we're gonna take our original switch from this courtesy light and button, and we're gonna plug it into our new LED light strip. Beautiful. Okay, so this is actually pretty simple. Probably easier to see up here. But all we do is we pry this bottom lip up a little bit, and we make sure the glowing edge faces down. So you're just gonna do that all the way around. Okay, so I'm gonna start right here with the wiring harness coming up just in the middle so you will see a tiny little bit of wire. I don't think it's a big deal. Everyone will be in awe of your new LED light strip. They won't notice. So we're just gonna have the edge come up like that and we're gonna go all the way around. And it looks like we're gonna end in the right spot, right where the overlap occurs. So you see a little bit of wiring showing. Not a big deal, make sure this stuff is all kind of tucked out of the way. There, we got it. So let's close this. We'll close the garage door, we'll turn off the lights and we'll do a reveal. Okay, we got the app open here so we can do this remotely and have some fun. We have the front closed. If everything works right, it should open up and we should see a nice halo around the front. Look at that. All right, I think that install went quite well. Some people might have trouble with the latch. I was fiddling with it a little bit off camera, had to make some small adjustments, but it was nothing too extreme. But that's probably your starting point if you're finding some problems. And again, just make sure all your wires are properly connected and nothing's loose, and you should be good to go. They have a ton of support on Hanshow's website. Make sure you reach out to them if you do have any technical difficulties. If you are on the website and you wanna do some shopping and you wanna save some money, put in the promo code Dawn's Life, save yourself 15%. But if you like today's video, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. We'll talk to you next time.